Mountain West Conference season here on CBS College Sports Network. Steve, could not be a better matchup. What a way to start. I mean, these coaches can't be happy. I'm sure they would rather have come in easy, not a matchup like this. We're moving on to conference play, and the first game, of course, was against UNLV. Uh, we had played UNLV on their home floor eight times during Coach Rose's tenure, and we were 0-8. And as much as you don't want to bring it up, you don't really have to, because everyone knows that's kind of the unspoken story here about how tough it's been for BYU, even in its best years, to get a win down there against UNLV. It's, it's just super frustrating, because you're just thinking, how do we beat you here? Why do you guys play so well? And how can we even just play good? And you still just humiliate us. There was a sense of urgency. And I, there, there was a sense of urgency all season, but I think it escalated, because that was right at the beginning of league play. Um, and the guys knew that it was now or never. Let's, let's make a run. So I actually thought, you know, this would be a good time to go in there and play them. Uh, it was a great time for us, as it turned out. I think we were 14-1 and one, uh, from our preseason. We had won the majority of our games away from the Marriott Center. We didn't depend on the home court for our team to be good. Uh, the players had a lot of confidence, and they had a lot of desire. Not only did the players want it, but we wanted it for Coach Rose more than anything. And we wanted to win not just for our team, but for a coach. I think it kind of reflected on um, the year before, just not being able to get past that, that first NCAA tournament game. And um, when we learned from that, we, we kind of applied that to this season and, and used that as, as fuel for this game. I actually heard different times our players talking about that in the locker room in our preparation. And uh, that, you know, this was going to be the time. And I think Jax was a huge part of believing that we could do this and then getting the rest of the guys to believe that they could do it. They knew that this was one of the things that they were going to have to overcome. We had to beat Las Vegas on their court for this season to be a success. That UNLV game was always going to be the game that everyone looked at you know, with the question mark. And the question was, are these guys for real? As soon as we got on the plane, we just wanted to play the game. Um, it felt like the longest night ever. But, you know, we had a really good feeling about it. Going into the Thomas and Mac, a really familiar place. We played there a ton. You know, the smell of the place, you know, the feel of the place. We got there. The crowd was crazy as can be. Again, as always, uh, they had, be they had like, Jimmer Who shirts on. The fans were nuts, absolutely nuts. I mean, it was definitely one of the more hostile environments we ever played in. Well, everybody was just going crazy, and they always sell the place out against us for some reason. They just don't like BYU. I think they kind of try to intimidate us with their fireworks and all that jazz. Going into this game, there's, I know Jim was thinking the same thing, where it was like, this is our senior year. We've never done this. Coach Rose never done this. This year, we went in there and whole different mindset, um, whole different expectations for our team. We put in a very different game plan. Jimmer forgetting his teammates have never won a game here. As Jackson Emery, the senior guard, drills a three. We knew what to expect. We knew that UNLV likes to play on runs. And when they get a run, you know, a lot of times what you do is you fold because you think, oh, like, at least we gave it our best shot. The team that is home usually is able to put their will. When the Rebels go on one of their runs and that crowd gets loud, usually the, what happens next is, you know, it goes from bad to worse. UNLV. And they came out strong again, just like they always do. Got up for about 10 points, 10, 11 points right in the beginning. And I was like, nah, this is not happening again. We, we got down, I think, 9 or 10 in the first half. But Jackson Emery, as the delay prolonged, the fans began to give Jackson and BYU a hard time for the delay. Jimmer basically just said, be quiet, and drilled about three or four deep threes. <laughs> the first play that stands out to me was Brandon's put-back dunk. For that again, Davis! And all of a sudden, before you know it, you look up, the game's tied. And how about this? BYU has scored back to take the lead. Yeah, right here, his players had to space the floor. For that, hits another one. And then he and Jackson just took over the game. For that, for that! And Emery. Makes a pay. You got Jimmer, who's on majority of the time, and then Jackson, if he's got his his shot going and his defense and him in the passing lanes, it's it's someone that it's it's near impossible to, to stop. It's turning into a blowout. Uh, they just kept 
you know, attacking them. UNLV just didn't have an answer for them. And we were playing out of our minds. We were playing well. Everything was going in. It seemed like that basket was just getting bigger and bigger. Baseline put back. Logan Magnuson. Yeah, if you were to not have told me the stats, I probably would have said Jackson had around 40 and Jimmer had around 60. Oh, for that! How deep was that? That was almost at the end of the V of UNLV. We got up 20 points and uh, everybody didn't, no one knew what to do. Everybody was leaving early. It was dead silent in there. I was screaming, going nuts, and everybody was as well, and it was the best feeling in the world.